Thank you. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that warm welcome. And, you know, it was a privilege and an honor to have served this community during 14 years in the Michigan legislature. And I was always grateful that you sent me to Lansing on your behalf. And I am incredibly humbled and grateful to be the 49th governor of what we know is the best state in the country, the great state of Michigan. So toward the end of the campaign, someone said to me, you know, if you win this race, you're going to have two months off between election day and when you're sworn in. And I was like, oh, aren't you precious? That's not how it works. An incredible amount of work happened in those 55 days from election day to when I was sworn in. Everything from plotting out um, who the cabinet is going to be and hiring phenomenal people like Trish Foster to head up the DTMB, right? <laughs> Paul Ajaba, my director of transportation, who's going to join me shortly on stage, and this incredible group of people. But really, the work started on January 1st after I took my oath of office, which is when we started building the state budget. Now, that's a process that generally starts around Labor Day. But when you're a new governor in your first year, you only get a chance to get started on January 1st. And so an incredible amount of work goes into that. It's a question of making sure it balances and sets the right priorities. And so I introduced my budget a few weeks ago, and that's what I want to spend my time talking with you today about our state budget, because a budget is a lot more than just simply numbers on a balance sheet. A budget is a statement of your values. It's a statement of where you are headed, what your vision is for the state, and what really the priorities are. And so what we're calling my budget is the road to opportunity, because you know me, I can't stop talking about those damn roads, right? So we're calling it the road to opportunity. Now the first picture, um, the first slide here is a mural that Terry Terry did for us. And it, it depicts the, the Michigan and where we are at right now. So on the left is the Michigan legacy. This was a place that people moved to from around the world for opportunity. People came to our state because we built the middle class. You could get a good job, pay you well enough, you could raise a family. It didn't matter what community you lived in, your kids would have a phenomenal public school education. You could have a high quality of life, turn on the water with confidence, and retire with dignity in this state. Now, after 40 years of disinvestment, we now find ourselves at a crossroads, all right? This is not a criticism of one party or one person. This is 40 years of disinvestment in our state. And we are at this crossroads, all right, let's see. Uh, where we have a bold choice to make. And that choice comes in the form of our budget. What are our priorities going to be? So it starts with a factual conversation, then we'll open it up for Q&A. But let's start with this. This is the state budget. It is $60 billion. $60 billion sounds like a lot of money because it is a lot of money. But the truth of the matter is when you look at this slide, there's only one part of it over which we have discretion as a state, as the legislature, who's much of whom is sitting right here at this table. And that is the general fund part of the budget. It is $10.7 billion. The general fund is what pays for all 48,000 state employees that we have who do the frontline work of protecting kids or veterans, cleaning up water, building roads. The 40, um, the $10.7 billion general fund is where we do everything uh, in state government that is protecting people, making our environment safe, making this a business-friendly place where people want to invest. And that's where we have choices to make. But the truth about that general fund is that while the cost of everything has gone up over the last 20 years, that general fund has not. As you can see, in 2020, uh, the general fund is predicted to be $10.7 billion, and that's the same size that it was in 2000. And that tells you everything about why we've got some of the challenges that we do. This is a great state. We've got wonderful strengths, but we've got some fundamental challenges. Had that general fund simply kept up with inflation, we would have $5.6 billion more to work with. That is the difference in the roads that we confront every single day. That is the difference in our educational outcomes for kids. This is the difference in the skills gap and water quality in our state. That's simply keeping up with inflation. So in order to make the budget 
balance. With the cost of everything going up and our general fund staying the same size, what we have done is move money around. In order to fix roads, because we've never built in a real road funding plan that grew with need of, of the size of, and condition of our roads, we've stolen money out of the general fund to fill potholes. To shore up the general fund, money was stolen from the school aid fund. And so as a consequence, we're not doing any of those things right. Every one of them has been undermined because of the shell game that has become of the state budget. Filling potholes is not rebuilding roads. Uh, making the cost of higher education go up because we're not funding it is not what we were supposed to be doing with the general fund. And we're making our kids and our K-12 system bear the brunt of all of this. And so we're not doing any of these things particularly well. And I want to show you how we, how we stack up. So this is a slide that shows you 90% of our roads at the federal standards, by federal standards, this is what they expect of all of the states, to have at any given time 90% of your roads in good to fair condition. Right now in Michigan, we are at 78%. I know there's a lot of you thinking, how on earth are we even that high, right? <laughs> but this is the precipice that we're about to fall off because this is where it gets more expensive because of the rate of deterioration. In just two years, just two years, we fall from 78% to 65%. One year later, we are down to 60%. The cost goes up. The danger increases. Our ability to maintain our edge and mobility is undermined. If we don't fix this problem, it's going to get more expensive and more dangerous by the day almost. By the beginning of the next gubernatorial term, the price tag will go from $2.5 billion today, which is the difference between 90% and where we are. It'll be another billion dollars just four years from now if we don't change this now. Now, this is a map that shows you where we have bad roads in Michigan. <laughs> I use this map because sometimes there's this mentality that, oh, it's a problem in one part of our state and not the other. This is the map. And this is why that last map exists, because this is where we rank when it comes to infrastructure funding. This is Michigan stacked up against the rest of the country. We are 46th out of 50 states. We are considered dead last when it comes to road quality in our country. We've received a grade D plus for our overall infrastructure and D minus for roads specifically from the American Society of Civil Engineers. Now this is another slide that I think is really important because when you steal money from our kids' schools to fill potholes, you end up falling behind when it comes to educational outcomes for our kids. This is about reading. Uh, this is about literacy proficiency. And Michigan ranks dead last in our country. Now we could fix the roads, we could clean up the water, we could do a lot of things, but if we don't fix this, our economic future is severely compromised, much less the quality of life and the ability to make a good living in this state. What am I? Oh, well, thanks. And Michigan kids have the same potential as any child in any other part of our country or world. Our teachers are as dedicated. That last slide is a function of this. That's where we rank when it comes to education funding growth. For 20 years, we have fallen to back of the pack. Now this slide is where we rank when it comes to skills. So Michigan was one of only nine states in the country and the only state in the Midwest that hadn't formally, formally uh, set a goal for post-secondary degree attainment or certificate attainment. And as a result, only 44% of our population has the skills they need to get into good paying jobs. This from a state that at one point had the finest workforce on the planet. We are behind when it comes to skills. And so I set a goal of 60% by 2030. I set that goal during my state of the state. Now anyone who's ever made a New Year's resolution knows setting a goal doesn't mean you're gonna get there alone, right? You have to have a strategy to do that. And that's what I've built into this budget. Now this map 
is a map that tells you what communities have PFAS in their drinking water. This is a drinking ma water map that does not have the overlay of old leaded pipes bringing water into our homes. And so drinking water has got to be one of the crises that we we tackle and we fix because you cannot live without clean drinking water. And our ability to do business and lure people to move into Michigan is undermined by all of these metrics that I've shown you, but this one is really um, important. So in order to fix these problems and to write the state budget, I said, we've got to have a goal. And what's it going to take to meet those goals? So the goal is this. By 2030, we need to make sure that we get to 90% of our roads in good to fair condition. That's going to be a lot of work. It's going to take a big investment, but it's absolutely doable and it is critical we get on the path to meeting that goal. Second, to ensure that every community in the state has clean drinking water. I hate that we have to set that as a goal, but we do. We must have this conversation. We must get to that goal. It also is to get to 60% of our adult population to have some sort of a post-secondary certificate or a degree to close the skills gap that is making Michigan less competitive and holding, holding down our ability to draw investment into our state, but also to make a good living. And finally, to ensure that Michigan goes back up to leading the world in education, becoming a top 10 state in literacy. So the solution is this. You know, I did an interview the other day and the man said, I know you want to raise the gas tax. And I said, back up. I don't want to raise the gas tax. No one wants to raise the gas tax. If this was easy, though, this would have been done already. This is a problem that, that has been laid at our feet. And in order to fix it, it requires making a big investment. Because I can tell you this, no one's passing out free tires. And Mexico is not going to rebuild our roads. It is time for us to have an adult conversation about who we are and where we want to be by 2030. To get there, it takes 45 cents a gallon to fix the roads in a way that we can get the school aid fund money back in the school aid fund and general fund dollars back into the general fund. And because I know that it's not going to be easy for some folks in our state, we've built in doubling the earned income tax credit, repealing the retirement tax, and the hidden tax every one of us drivers is paying today in the form of new rims or new wheels or tires or windshields will go down precipitously as the roads get better. So every one of us will benefit. This is what that investment looks like. It's about $23 a month for the average driver in our state. The offsets that we've built in are about $30 for uh, families who are low income, who qualify for the earned income tax credit. The other is $65 relief for pensioners who are living on fixed incomes, and that's the relief that we've built in there. And then you'll see the $646 that we're all paying because our roads are getting worse and worse. Now, the road tax we're currently paying is the worst kind of road tax because it doesn't actually fix the roads, and that's why it's time for us to do it right. Now, I use this map because I want you to know we're not alone. I just was at the National Governors Association in Washington, D.C. Uh, last month. Every governor in the nation is talking about the skills gap and the infrastructure crisis, every one of us. The sad truth, though, for us is that no one's starting where we are. No one is as far back on both issues as Michigan is. And so we've got to be bold to catch up and to become leaders again in our country. But the one that I want you to focus here, so red represents Republicans, blue represents Democrats, so I wanted you to see this is not a partisan solution to a problem that vexes us. This is a thoughtful way of fixing a problem that both Democrats and Republicans have embraced. But if you look at Ohio, 18 cents a gallon is what the Republican governor in Ohio has proposed. They are starting with much better roads than we have, and that's what they deem necessary even with toll roads in Ohio. That's the solution they put on the table. So the way I designed this budget is that it requires one historic vote. We adopt this solution, and it puts us in a position to fix all of these problems. One lever fixes a number of problems. Because I know, as a former legislator, 
the worst vote you can take is a vote that you've told the public you fixed the problem, but you didn't really fix the problem. Maybe it's only worse if you have eight votes that you take and you tell the public you fixed the problem and it didn't actually do it. And that's why I put a real solution on the table because I'm tired of shell games and half measures. We deserve a real solution, an honest conversation. And when we do this one historic vote, it puts us in a position to fix all of our roads so we get up to 90% of our roads in good to fair condition by 2029. It puts $500 million into our school aid fund, the biggest investment in Michigan kids' education in a generation of Michigan children. It puts us in the position to go forward with the Michigan Reconnect, which is an opportunity to upskill if you're an adult in the workplace who needs finer skills and the My Opportunity Scholarship for graduating high school seniors to bring down the cost of a four-year degree or to pursue a debt-free community college opportunity. It gives us the ability to use the general fund dollars that are going into potholes to clean up drinking water in Michigan. So $120 million to improve drinking water infrastructure, that's the old pipes, uh, funding for service line replacements and combating PFAS, and $60 million for hydration stations in school districts that have lead leaching into the water coming into their buildings. And if you're an accountant, maybe this is the most exciting part of the state budget. We're putting dollars right where they're supposed to go. So that means the dollars collected at the pump are constitutionally protected and will be guaranteed to go into roads and bridges. The general fund dollars will go back into general fund expenses and the school aid fund, which has been robbed, will actually get back into schools and educating our kids so we can triple the number of literacy coaches, fund at-risk programs, fund special education and CTE, the things it's supposed to be doing. Now in the budget, if you go to the state website, you can click on your community and you can see what roads are gonna be prioritized in your community if we get this budget passed. And you can click on your school district to find out what it means to your school district. As I said, every student will have the greatest investment in their education in a generation of Michigan kids. But we've also built in some equitable measures so that we are increasing funding for at-risk students. So as you can see, the Lansing school district, each child will have a greater investment of $342 per pupil. That's huge. <laughs> and if you live in East Lansing or Okemos or Hazlitt or DeWitt, you can go on the website and see what it means for your children's education, for your neighbor's kids' education, your community. The goal at the end of the day is to make sure that this is a place where our kids stay, where our families and businesses can thrive, where other people come to for opportunity. That's the great legacy of this state. We have a chance to ensure that that is the great future of our state as well, to reject partisan bickering and half measures, to show the world that divided government doesn't have to look like Washington, D.C. It can look like people who remember we are Michiganders first. I say it is time to move forward with in honesty and real solutions and actually fix these problems so that we can be proud to say this is our home and others are envious of who we are here in Michigan. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. I appreciate your attention. I know we're going to have a lot of thoughtful questions, but I first wanted uh, to give the Director of Transportation a few minutes at the microphone. You know, Paul Ajaba is a creative thinker. He's an innovator. He's an engineer. And he's the kind of person that I think is going to make sure that every dollar we put into our transportation system is spent in a way that can be tracked can be measured, and is going to be creatively solving problems. And with that, I just want to hand this over to Paul Ajiba. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, as the Governor said, my name is Paul Ajiba. 
I'm otherwise known as the fix the damn road guys these days. <laughs> so um, what I'd like to do is maybe share a few slides with you to kind of tell you the magnitude of the problem we have. But before, we do, before I do that, I'd like to say uh, one thing. When my, my team and I met with the governor, when we we're going through this budget uh, process, she said, Paul, tell me what is it really going to take to get to the 90% goal. And when we gave the governor the numbers, she said, well, that's what we're going to take to the people. Van called her a difference maker. I called her a bold difference maker. And I think she deserves a hand for that. <laughs> the, the slide you see on the screen here shows the funding uh, mechanism that was uh, passed in 2015. That orange line is the schistograph of where our pavement condition was headed. In 2015, MDOT was on record as saying, we as an organization needed $1.2 billion just for our system. But when the package was passed, it was $1.2 billion and was put through the Act 51 formula. And MDOT only got 39% of that. So we were already 61% in the hole. So when people say, well, you got money in 2015, how come we're not seeing a difference? That is why. The blue line is what we projected if that pa uh, package passed, but the black line is the actual of what we're seeing out there now. That green line is the governor's proposal. As you can see, it's such a huge difference. It changes the trajectory of that downward slope to an upward trajectory. And that's what we're aiming for. This slide, I kind of want to share with you because I, if I'm a business owner and I see this, I will be concerned that any out-of-state company will not want to locate to Michigan seeing something like this. Actually, a friend of mine sent this to me with a LOL on it. But uh, as somebody who's been in the department for 29 years, I didn't, take, I didn't think it was funny. So I took the LOL out of it just to make the point that, again, as a business owner, I wouldn't want this being put out there. Uh, it, it's, more, it's becoming more of an economic issue and also a safety factor. I'll give you an example. This weekend, I was driving down a back road in, in Washington County. It's a two-lane, two-way roadway, and the, the driver in front of me was literally straddling the, the double yellow line. As uh, traffic, any uh, opposing vehicle is coming, he'll dock back in and, and back out. That, to me, is a, it's a safety issue that needs to be addressed. This next slide is becoming too often the situation out there. This is an exchange between a friend of mine and I. He, he texted me. Never mind he called me Paulie, but uh, <laughs> kind of take a, look, take a look at the dates on those texts. That is less than a month. He had two flat tires. The second one, as you can see that picture on your right, that rim is bent. He spent a lot of money to fix that. As the governor said, we're paying this tax already. Why not pay to fix the roads? Instead of us going to Bell Tire on the weekend, spend four or five hours sitting there waiting to get our tires and struts fixed. So this is the challenge we have. And I will give you not two fun facts. Uh, Florida has about as much land miles as Michigan does and has about as much bridges as Michigan does. But Florida spends $6.1 billion annually on their roadways and $1 billion maintaining their roads. You build it, you maintain it, it'll last longer, right? Michigan spends $1.4 billion on our roads and $325, $330 million maintaining our roads. That's the difference you see out there. And this is why we have to change this trajectory. Thank you for having me.